When in Rome, remaster. Rome Total War, arguably the greatest and most revolutionary Total War game of all time, has very recently been announced to be in for the remaster treatment. There's barely a month to go until this is available to buy and play, and we only just found out about this a few days ago. To get started, I'd like to open with this. I first saw this back in 2012 when Rome 2 was announced. It was all over the Facebook pages and forums for a whole year in the run-up to release. I even included it in my treatise on Rome 2 three months after launch. That was the video where I was complaining about the absolute state of Rome 2, giving special attention to how the AI basically didn't exist. We were four patches in by that point, and yep, no functional AI. That was the fourth patch in the first month. Rome 2 got 18 patches in total, and still is a bug-ridden mess. Rome 2 was the worst launch of a game I've ever experienced. Trainwreck doesn't even begin to cover it. It was so bad that the creative director had to take to the forums to make an official public apology three days after launch, so don't take my word for it. So Rome 2 is one of the most overhyped and under-delivered games of all time, and this meme encapsulates the unjustified hype phase perfectly, which is why I included it in my treatise on Rome 2 when I was describing the misguided pre-release hype. For people that were around during the hype of Rome 2, this meme is one of the cringiest things in existence. So to see this being recycled for the Rome remaster makes me think someone has a pretty dark sense of humour. And to see it being upvoted to the moon on the Total War subreddit makes it look like the attempt to replace the jaded customer base by horizontaling out into Warhammer after Rome 2 nearly put the whole franchise in the ground has largely succeeded. And it shows who this remaster is really for. As if the Chinese that makes up the bottom half of the FAQ for it didn't already. Anyway, as soon as this was announced, I had a lot of people asking what I thought, and I immediately wrote up a post for Reddit that I could link to. So I'll post that right up and you can look at it if you want, link in the description. This video is going to elaborate on it. I'm extremely reluctant to get on board with remasters, but if one comes along that does it properly, I can really appreciate it, absolutely. The prospect of buying something for a second time, so I can then do with it almost exactly what I've already done decades ago, is very hard to justify for me. There better be a good reason for it, and I think that's a sensible attitude to have towards these things, which are similar to director's cuts for movies or 4K Blu-ray re-releases. Remasters are fundamentally very counterintuitive. It's almost like a parody of consumption. As a publisher or retailer, to go for something like this is to be very bold and brazen. It can easily backfire. Just look at how Bethesda is basically one big Todd Howard is selling Skyrim again meme. A third of all references I see to anything Bethesda related on the internet today is that meme, by the way. When you're doing a remaster out of the blue like this, there better be no evidence of corner cutting or missed opportunity whatsoever in the final product, because every little bit of laziness chips away at the sincerity of the proposition, which is entirely one of polishing a diamond. The work to actually make the game has already been done, and the work was deemed to have been very good because the game's been selected for special treatment now. The foundation is solid, the polishing is all that's left to do, that's what you're actually selling, the new effort that's going in. It's a very fine line to walk to remaster and you have to be very careful to not be found guilty of just being greedy, of double dipping. If you're selling it under the term remaster and not simply as port to modern systems, it damn well better be doing everything it can to live up to that claim. This kind of project has to be very, very honest and very well motivated to be justified in the first place, 
and then done very well to be at all dignified when all is said and done. I've bought one remaster ever, and that was Homeworld Remastered in 2015. When it launched in 1999, it was the first 3D real-time strategy game ever, and it was set in space <laughs> to make the most of its extra dimension, with stunning visuals of radiant nebulae, of nearby stars going supernova, of galactic cores emitting radiation. It was a game that was very atmospheric, very immersive. You would issue your orders and then sit back and watch the dogfight against the backdrop of deep space as the incredible ambient music set the pace. It was the perfect game for the remaster treatment. Homeworld 2 was remastered alongside Homeworld 1 and even made compatible with it in multiplayer. In Homeworld 2, you had ion cannons charging up dust clouds and asteroid fields, you had battle cruisers creaking and buckling as their hull integrity failed after a long fight, their ion cannons desperately trying to get off one final fuck you pulse before the ship went critical. And I've lost it. Shit. You had ship graveyards with unimaginably massive debris fields. These were games that used the medium of gaming to show off science fiction like never before. Mass Effect with its nearby red giants and planets lit by binary star systems was actually really late to the party here. The soundtrack is one of the best in video game history and the way it was used to support the gameplay experience was unprecedented. I sometimes use tracks from Homeworld in my end of videos credits, as some of you might have noticed. Even today, 20 years later, Homeworld remains one of the most aesthetic and immersive gameplay experiences of all time, and the remaster just made it better in all the ways it was already great. With the remaster, the emphasis was on constant visual and audio improvement and upgrade, a true remaster. The textures were all remade with greater fidelity, everything was cranked up, the famously spectacular panoramas were made even more detailed and vibrant, the voice actors were brought back in to re-record their lines, even the famous soundtrack got the full remaster treatment, with the original composer coming back in and literally remastering, which is where the word comes from. Imagine a remaster without a remaster. <laughs> there were videos uploaded on IGN showing side-by-side -side comparisons, so there could be no doubts as to the efforts taken. All the way through Homeworld Remaster's development, you saw evidence of pride of the effort that went into their work, and a desire to show it off. No corners cut, and no signs of just wanting to get it finished for a deadline. It was pure fan service while making Homeworld accessible to the people that didn't get to experience it for the first time, and it even included special details to tie in the very decent spin-off ground-based real-time tactics that was in the works, Shipbreakers, later renamed to Deserts of Karak, and now we have a Homeworld 3 announced as of 2019. So it wasn't just a grab and run, it was the first stage of a plan and they're following it up, they committed and they followed up, and so far so good. Homeworld was resurrected as a franchise after more than a decade, and it all started with a well-motivated remaster in 2015. A remaster that delivered. Command line green. Initial fleet in position. Destination cancelled. So that was the opening from Homeworld 1. And what's really cool is we captured that about 20 feet from here uh, last night. Uh, and Sean Ahern over in the corner was the one that just cut that all together in the last 40 minutes. Rome Total War was the first 3D Total War game, and it brought Rome to life. The doomed overhype for Rome 2 was in part fueled by nostalgia for Rome 1. 
I've already recounted in my Testudo focused video how Rome Total War did so many things better in 2004 than modern Total War games do in 2019. It's why the BBC's Time Commanders used it for daytime TV and it became a favourite that everyone still remembers to this day. Even the slingers of Rome Total War are just better in almost every way than every depiction we've had ever since. They look better, they sound better, they play better. You could go down and look at the Roman architecture, the Colosseum of Rome itself, the triumphal arch of Rome that has the exact same inscriptions as the real arch of Titus in Rome and Italy. The original developers of Rome Total War did the work to make a legendary game that revolutionised real-time strategy forever. Rome Total War is old enough and influential enough to be able to justify a remaster. Let's see if the third party development team does it justice and makes a remaster that the original Rome Total War devs can be proud of and feel does justice to their work, just as I'm sure the original Homeworld devs were proud when the Homeworld remaster was so well received. Some of those developers were even in the new team that made it, so they had some skin in the game, and they made sure that original vision was preserved. In anticipation of this Rome remaster, I made a community post describing my problems running Rome Total War in 2021 and asking how many people's Steam versions don't run properly, and about 75% reported issues. I also happened to notice a comment telling me that my described issues were down to the 1.51 Steam patch in 2015. I got a few of them actually. This really piqued my curiosity, so I tried reverting the game to 1.5 and voila, my original Steam version of Rome Total War now plays quite smoothly and works as well as it ever did. I'm playing a perfectly functional game from 2004 and 2021. I still have the janky drag placement of units with the annoying delay that forces me to wait between all actions I perform. See how it, it didn't consider my drag? I click and I drag quickly and then it does this. It puts it where my mouse is released, it doesn't drag. If I want it to drag I've got to do this and wait. So yeah, they need to fix that, that's one thing they have to fix, the remaster can improve that. I still have the terrible placement of units and towns that makes them a chore to fight in. I still have the needlessly atrocious unit pathfinding in general. I still have to spend an hour editing text files to customise my controls for creating and selecting groups. I still can't make single unit groups. Even Shogun 2 didn't have that. Someone mod that in for Shogun 2 for the love of... Bishamontan. I still have to make sure my second click of the double click doesn't get swallowed because if it does, my unit walks uselessly instead of running and ruins my plans and ruins the pace of gameplay. Get through this guy. Come on, run! I fucking told you to run. I clicked twice. Fucking run, holy shit. Infuriating bullshit. I still have to use the edge of my screen to pan the camera with the mouse which takes way too long and means my other monitors can make my game tab out if I misclick. It feels like it takes effort to move the camera around, it's like my god. You cannot play this game if you're lazy. Jesus. There's definitely a lot of opportunity here for this remaster. They better take it. They're given access to the game to dozens of people and we still don't really know any of these things, which is just bizarre. Really, really strange. If I was given access, these are the things I'd have evaluated for and covered immediately, before anything else. Playing on 1.5, which is a stable version, the last stable version. And yeah, I can actually play this, so my problems are more or less addressed. All I can really ask for now is better quality of life and interface improvements, that's all I care about. I want to be able to not feel clunky, janky bullshit while I'm playing and have a decent frame rate so my mouse doesn't look like it's going in slow motion. Also the camera, definitely as well. But yeah look I can actually see my onager projectiles, that's the first time in about a year. I haven't heard anyone talking clearly about frame rates and comparing them to what they get on regular Rome 1, which is one of the most 
immediately and universally important things for absolutely everyone. Very, very bizarre. It's obvious where the selling points should be. Immense visual remaster, soundtrack remaster, performance issues all fixed, interface completely replaced with the modern UI, AI completely overhauled, pathfinding issues all fixed, that's my list, that's what I'll be looking through when I get access. The remaster could capture the original vision of Rome Total War and enhance it, making the best parts of it accessible to a younger audience, and in doing so, maybe set the stage for further appreciation of past successes and what brought them. If this is an amazing remaster and it really succeeds, I'll be able to play Rome Total War like I've never played it before. Maybe after that, we can get the first patches in 10 years for Empire and maybe have it finally become playable. If this is the start of a good trajectory, then maybe somewhere along it, I can finally get to play Empire. Or, the remaster could be a disappointment that's not only doomed in itself, but harms the legacy of Rome Total War and be like the final season of Game of Thrones, burying everything to do with Rome Total War forever. So let's see in a couple of months if Acceptor We Will Attack please do not attack, continues to be quaint and nostalgic, or if it takes on another meaning entirely. I don't have access to the remaster, so I can't play it and I can't say what I actually think about it yet, and even if I was allowed to play it, I wouldn't be able to be honest about what I thought about it because the last time I did that with early access was how I lost my early access. But I'll hopefully be playing it when it launches, and then the work on the treatise on Rome Remastered can begin. See you then. Oh, one more thing. The prize pool for the 200 APM Shogun 2 Chad tournament for April just hit £500. If you want to sign up, you've still got a few more days before it begins. Also, feel free to chip into the pool to make it all the more glorious and spectacular for the victor. I'll be uploading the highlights to my second channel, at the very least. Beyond that, We'll have to see. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time. If you appreciate my work and want to show your support, I do have a Patreon. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Roadie 451, Halcyon, Robert Sparks, Dake, and Queen Zoestra. I think it picked that hill because it knows that you're going to attack in the melee and what it wants to do is it wants to rush its melee down when you charge so it catches you in that valley and then it will sling you to death. <laughs> yeah, he's genius. We've actually been thinking the eye's bad this entire time but it's, it's amazing. <laughs>